Sutra, Disciples of the Buddha. What is the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's treasury of giving? These Bodhisattvas practice ten kinds of giving. They are giving by reducing one's portion, exhaustive giving, the giving of inner wealth, the giving of outer wealth, the giving of inner and outer wealth, total giving, past giving, future giving, present giving, and ultimate giving. Commentary when the Bodhisattva forest and merit and of merit and virtue finishes speaking the treasury of learning, he calls out again, Disciples of the Buddha, what is the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's treasury of giving? Among the greatest of Bodhisattvas, what is the treasury of giving that they practice? Then he follows with an explanation. These Bodhisattvas practice ten kinds of giving. The Bodhisattvas who practice the ten inexhaustible treasuries also cultivate ten kinds of giving. They are giving by reducing one's portion, exhaustive giving, the giving of inner wealth, the giving of outer wealth, the giving of inner and outer wealth, total giving, past giving, future giving, present giving, ultimate giving. Each of these is explained in detail in the following passage of text. Bodhisattvas practice giving. Some people who have never heard the sutras explained don't know what a Bodhisattva is. What is a Bodhisattva? He is an enlightened sentient being who enlightens the sentient beings. What is a sentient being? All those with blood and breath are said to be sentient. Things with the blood and breath are said to be insentient. Bodhisattvas are those who enlighten all those with the sentience. They are also sentient beings that are enlightened. Among living beings, they are those that are enlightened. Originally, they are. They too are living beings, but they have become enlightened. As to enlightenment, there is self-enlightenment, enlightenment of others, and the perfection of enlightenment and practice. Self-enlightenment means that one has become enlightened oneself. This refers to those of the two vehicles, that is, South hearers and those enlightened two conditions. South hearers are those who, upon hearing the voice of the Buddha, the sound of the Buddha, awaken to the way. They cultivate the drama of the four holy truths, suffering, accumulation, extinction, and the way. One enlightened two conditions is also called a Pratika Buddha, he cultivates the travelings of conditioned co-production and awakens to the way. The travelings are ignorance conditions activity, activity conditions consciousness, consciousness conditions name and form, name, name and form conditions the six entrances, the six entrances conditions contact, contact conditions feeling, feeling conditions love, Love conditions grasping, grasping conditions having existence, having existence conditions birth, birth conditions old age and death. These are the travelings of conditioned co-production. If ignorance is extinguished, then activity comes to an end. If activity comes to an end, then consciousness is extinguished. If consciousness is extinguished, then name and form are extinguished. If name and form are extinguished, then the six entrances are extinguished. If the six entrances are extinguished, then contact is an extinguished. If contact is extinguished, then feeling is extinguished. If feeling is extinguished, then love is extinguished. If love is extinguished, then grasping is extinguished. And when grasping is extinguished, then existence is extinguished. When existence is extinguished, then birth, old age, and death are extinguished. These travelings are those which those enlightened to conditions cultivate to awaken to the way. When a Buddha is in the world, they are called those enlightened to conditions. When there is no Buddha in the world, they are called solitarily enlightened ones. So, cultivators who enlighten themselves are those of the two vehicles. They are enlightened themselves and therefore are given from common people because ordinary common people are not enlightened. 
What does it mean to not be enlightened? It means to take what is right as wrong and what is wrong as right. It means to take what is black as white and what is white as black. That's a common person. Those who enlighten others are bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas can enlighten themselves and enlighten others. A fully enlightened one is a Buddha who is complete with the three kinds of enlightenment. That's a brief explanation of the meaning Bodhisattva. The giving which a Bodhisattva practices is of three kinds: the giving of wealth, the giving of drama, the giving of fearlessness. Wealth refers to all of one's valuables. Outwardly, it refers to one's country, cities, wife, and children. All of one's most precious gems. Inwardly, it refers to one's head, eyes, brain, and marrow. To be able to relinquish all of this is considered to be the giving of wealth. The giving of dharma means to speak dharma for living beings. It is said that of all the kinds of offerings, the offering of dharma is the ultimate one. To use dharma as an offering is the highest kind of gift because it can rescue people's wisdom life. Speaking, speaking the dharma can cause people to resolve their minds on body, on enlightenment, and to cause them to accomplish the unsurpassed path. That's why, among the kinds of giving, the giving of dharma is the most important. The giving of fearlessness is the third. This means that. Whenever you fight someone who is frightened, or who is in some difficulty, or who has gotten involved in some dangerous circumstance, you are able to comfort him and cause him to not be afraid. You cause his mind to settle and be peaceful without any fear. Every bodhisattva who practices the bodhisattva way should practice these ten kinds of giving. Now we are. Participating in this Kuan Yin recitation session, and everyone is single-mindedly reciting the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva. Kuan Yin Bodhisattva's name means to regard all the sounds in the world. This particular Bodhisattva follows the sounds to rescue people from suffering. Whatever particular difficulty you happen to be in, if you happen to recite the Bodhisattva's name, he will bestow fearlessness upon you and practice the giving of fearlessness. Kuan refers to the one who is able to regard using wisdom. The world sounds. Shu Yin are the experiences which are contemplated. The states. What is contemplated is the realm of the states of living beings. So this Bodhisattva is one who uses the wisdom which is able to contemplate the wisdom of the contemplator to contemplate the various realms of all experiences. Now we are all here reciting the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva. And Kuan Yin Bodhisattva uses his wisdom to contemplate the sounds within the minds of all living beings. He makes it so whatever we seek will be in accord with our wishes. When you participate in this session of reciting Kuan Yin Bodhisattva's name, every time you make that sound, there is a comparable strength which arises. If you recite once. Then there is one part strength. If you recite ten times, then there is ten times the strength. When you recite the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, a light of eating drama is emitted, which reaches this way place. This beneficial light of the drama descends and reaches our way place and pours, pours upon the crowds of the heads of each person who is participating in this session. It is a sweet dew which anoints the crown of your head to help you. You are washed clean of all of your offenses by this water of sweet dew, and your good fruits will be able to increase and grow. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha, what is the Bodhisattva's giving by reducing one's portion? These Bodhisattvas. Who are human and compassionate by nature, well practiced giving. If they obtain delicious food, they do not keep it for themselves, but offer it to living beings and afterwards eat a portion. It is the same with all material objects that they receive. 
commentary. After Forest of Merit and Virtual Bodhisattva has finished naming the ten kinds of giving, he again calls out, All of you disciples of the Buddha, what is the Bodhisattva's giving of reducing, reducing one's portion? Portion means to divide up or portion out, and in this way to practice giving. These Bodhisattvas were humane and compassionate by nature, while well practice giving. Whoever has a disposition which is by nature humane and compassionate is this Bodhisattva. Whoever is not naturally humane and compassionate is not this Bodhisattva. Now, if you are this Bodhisattva, then you ought to cultivate the Bodhisattva path. If you are not this Bodhisattva, you should train your mind and also practice the Bodhisattva path. To be human and compassionate is to have humanitarian feelings about people, to be good to everyone. To have a natural disposition is to be naturally endowed with that kind of character. A Bodhisattva is naturally endowed with the character of humanness and compassion. His inherent nature is that way. He is good at practicing charity and giving. What he likes is to be charitable and to give. Charity is being very kind to people and in a kindly fashion, practicing giving to all living beings. If they obtain delicious food, if they come into possession of some very delicious and exquisitely flavored things to eat, how do they act? They do not keep it for themselves alone. They don't just take the whole portion for themselves to enjoy. What do they do? They offer it to living beings. They want to give to living beings. They give all of the excellent flavors, all the good things to eat to all living beings and afterwards eat a portion. First of all, they give them to all other living beings and then afterwards they themselves eat. They themselves eat. Only then do they go on to eat those delicious flavors. What is this? This is renouncing oneself for the sake of people. One forgets about oneself for the sake of all other living beings. It is the same with all material objects they receive. It doesn't matter who gives these bodhisattvas the offerings of food or offerings of clothing or offerings of various kinds of jewelry. It's all the same way. They act just the same way as when they obtained all the excellent flavors. They don't take them all for themselves, but divide them up and give some to all living beings before they partake of any themselves, whether it is an offering of clothing, medicine, or bedding. It's all treated in the same way. So, all of you think about this. Why is it that we here want to undergo suffering? Cultivating the way here is very bitter and it's not easy to endure this method of practice. But we endure it because we want to practice the Bodhisattva way. Why is it that we just eat once a day? This is also because we want to economize our on food and drink so we can offer them to all living beings of the world. It's for this reason that we undergo a little discomfort and thereby enable other people to be full and warm. That's a very good kind of practice. Therefore, now as the Avatamsaka Sutra is spoken, all of you should reflect upon what it says. We are here practicing the Bodhisattva path. This means that we want to take what we eat and drink and make an offering of it to the living beings of the world. This is an extremely big-hearted matter. All of you can endure this kind of suffering. This is an inconceivable kind of state. Sutra, when they themselves eat, they have this thought, in my body there are 80,000 worms who rely on me to live. When my body is full and content, they are full and content. When my body is suffering from hunger, they also suffer from hunger. Now, I now accept all of this food and drink with the hope that all living beings will be full. It is on, in order to give that I take this food 
I am not greedy for its flavors. Commentary: When they themselves eat, they have this thought: If the Bodhisattvas who cultivate the ten inexhaustible treasuries obtain exquisite flavors and are about to eat them, they first make the following reflection: In my body, there are eighty thousand worms. Within my body, there are eighty thousand bugs. We people are big bugs. A human body is comprised of a lot of little bugs, and in the little bugs are numerous microorganisms. Basically, our bodies are just one big collection of bugs. People who don't understand this consider their bodies to be extremely valuable. For the sake of the body, one seeks good things to eat, good things to wear, and a comfortable place to live. Every day, one spends all of one's time looking after oneself. But you don't know that your body is just a whole lot of small bugs congregated together to make up one big bug. In every single one of your hair pores, there are gathered a lot, a whole lot of bugs. The Bodhisattva reflects that the eighty thousand bugs dwelling within his body are those who rely on me to live. All of those bugs rely on me to survive. When my body is full and content, they are full and content. If my body is happy and full and not hungry or thirsty, all the eighty thousand bugs are also full and happy. All of those bugs also have food. They have. Things to eat, and so they are all happy and feel really fine. But when my body is suffering from hunger, they also suffer from hunger. If my body is hungry, then they also suffer from hunger. All of those bugs in my body are also without anything to eat. If I don't have anything to eat, they also go hungry. I now accept all of this food and drink with the hope that all living beings will be full. It is for that reason that I eat these things, such as drinking a cup of tea, or maybe eating a piece of fruit, or maybe drinking a glass of milk, or maybe eating some cheese. But as to cheese, you ought to know all of you Americans like to eat this, but Trung Quoc Chinese people really don't like to eat cheese. When Trung Quoc Chinese people see cheese, especially French cheese, which stings to high heaven. They pluck up their noses, not even to speak of eating it. They won't even smell it. But Americans say, "Oh, that's something really good. You think it's so fine because all of the bugs in your body are fond of it. They've developed a taste for it. This is called getting together with a stench and liking it." The Bodhisattva reflects, "I now want to cause living beings." Universally to be full, it is in order to give that I take this food. When I eat and drink all of these things, I want to. I want all living beings also to be full of them. It's for their sake that I eat. I ju- it's just because I want to portion out this food and give it to all of those eighty four, eighty thousand bucks that I eat and drink these things. However, I am not greedy for its flavors, and so it's not for oneself that one eats the trees, and not out of greed for its flavor, but rather it is for the sake of all of these eighty thousand bucks. One does not become greedy for any flavor, whether it's good or bad, stinking or delicious. When you come right down to it, it's the bugs who like to eat it, so I give it to them to eat. Sutra. They also have this thought. Throughout the long night of time, I have been lovingly attached to my body and have partaken of food and drink from a desire to fill it up. Now I use the nourishment. From this food, as a gift to living beings, and vow to eternally cut off greed and attachment with regard to my body. This is called giving by reducing one's portion. Commentary: They also have this thought. These bodhisattvas also strike up false thinking. They strike up false thinking about living beings and say, "Has this living being gotten to the point that I should rescue him?" How is that living being doing? 
have we have this his body sprouts come up yet the bodhisattvas also strike up false thinking but it's not the same kind of false thinking that we have at all times it's for the sake of teaching living beings throughout the long night of time i have been lovingly attached to my body during the dark and obscure night of time what i have loved most was my body my biggest attachment has been this body of mine i was afraid of, um, afraid my body would be cold hungry thirsty or too hot in every time and every place i was always taking my body into consideration I was always taking good care of it, considering it more important than a precious gem and taking this body as a really fine thing. But if you go without a bath for a couple of days, your body stinks unbearably. What's so good about that, no matter how good it looks to you? It's just like taking the most beautiful clothing and adorning a toilet. Everyone really knows, no one has to be told that inside the body there are things that stink. The Bodhisattva also loved and was attached to his body, so he didn't become a Buddha. The Bodhisattva continues to reflect, and in order to make my body healthy and have the comfort of being full, I have partaken of food and drink from a desire to fill it up. I have accepted this food and drink. Now I use the nourishment from this food as a gift to living beings. I universally bestow all of this upon all of the 84,000 small bugs in my body and vow to eternally cut off greed and attachment with regard to my body. I want to once and for all cast out greedy love and attachment. This is called giving by reducing one's portion. The Bodhisattva practices giving his portion, cutting down on the amount he uses or not using his portion at all in order to give it to other beings. Sutra What is the Bodhisattva's exhaustive giving? Disciples of the Buddha, these Bodhisattvas obtain all kinds of supremely flavored food and drink fragrant flowers, clothes, and provisions of life. Were they to use these things themselves, they would be peaceful, happy, and long-lived. If they deny themselves and give to others, then they will be poor, miserable, and die young. Commentary What is the Bodhisattva's exhaustive giving? Just prior to this, we talked about giving by reducing one's portion. Now we come to the second kind of giving, exhaustive giving. What is the exhaustive giving of a great Bodhisattva, disciples of the Buddha, for rest of merit and virtual Bodhisattva speaks out and says, these Bodhisattvas obtain all kinds of supremely flavored food and drink. These Bodhisattvas have somehow come across a great variety of superbly for flavored food and drink, also fragrant flowers, clothes, and provisions of life, things that are able to sustain the lives of humans. Were they to use these things themselves, they would be peaceful, happy, and long-lived. They would have a peaceful and calm existence, and their years would increase. If they deny themselves and give to others, then they will be poor, miserable, and die young. They will compound their sufferings and shorten their own lives. What should they do? It explained below.